and welcome to Peggle Through the News, our new weekly um, video game news show. This is our pilot episode, so we're just getting used to it. Um, welcome, oh, thank you. Sorry if I pronounced your name wrong, Shiro a Gaming. Thank you for the follow and welcome. So this is a brand new thing we're doing on a Friday morning. I wanted to do a bit like a, a podcast news show, so I've got a list of news stories, but we've also got some pedal action going on, and you can actually use, uh, no worries, you can actually use the channel points to choose where to drop the pedal ball. I'm going to drop the ball between different news stories, but if anyone wants to drop a pedal ball at any point, you can just use the channel points. We've got pedal drop right, pedal drop left, and pedal drop middle. Um, yeah. So let's get into it. Um, I'll just say a bit about what I'm doing, been doing this week. Uh, I haven't had much chance for too many different games this week. Been very busy with some technical issues <laughs> on the back end with editing videos, but I think I might have got that sorted by now. Um, game wise, I've actually just started and I've played quite a bit actually of um, Warhammer 40k Inquisitor. Martyr, I think that's the full title. It's definitely sort of like a Diablo esque, but with space marines. But all the technical issues that's wrong in the game, I really, really like it. I really enjoyed it. I keep going back to it. So I'm not too far. Sometimes if there's like a good game in there somewhere, but there's only a few technical issues and it doesn't take away from it too much, I'm happy enough to keep on playing it. So um, I definitely worth check checking that out. I did buy it on sale at some point. It was the bundle that came with everything. I have this weird pet that follows me around. It's basically a skull with some type of like, looks like a World War II hat on that's smoking a cigar. It's the strangest pet, pet ever I've ever seen. Um, I do like pets in games, but that one is definitely unusual. Uh, let's move on to some news. I think that's about it, really. And uh, just been doing a bit more of Elder Scrolls Online. And this week's streams were enjoyed. We had some Stuntman Ignition yesterday. Uh, we had one of our viewers, Croatia, come in and did some of the multiplayer, so that was good fun. And then Wednesday we did our weekly Pokemon Unite live stream. Had some good matches in that, actually. Did quite well there. Tuesday we had something, and I've totally gone blank. Tuesday. Yes! Boyfriend Dungeon. Now that was a surprise. Um... A little bit strange because I'm not used to playing Dane Sims, but it was an interesting mix between Dane Sim and Dungeon Crawler. But it does really play really quite well, actually, the Dungeon Crawler section. And I guess for Dane Sim, it's good. I just have nothing to compare to. Uh, I think the other big name I can think of Dane Sim that I know a lot of people like is. Oh, no, what's the daddy one called? That's something where the single dads dating each other. I forgot what that's called. I heard, I heard good stuff about that one. Uh, let's move on to the news stories. So first up, we have the Nintendo Mini Direct. I like how they call Mini. There were so many announcements in this Nintendo Direct. It was their partner edition, so it wasn't things directly from Nintendo, but they were um, all available on the Switch. So I'm going to start off at no particular order, so don't take it the wrong way if it's like, hey, you named this one first. It's not the biggest announcements. I've just put them in a random order here to talk through. So first of this, I was like, wow, because I never got around to playing them. Mega Man Battle Network Legacy Collection. Now, I really enjoyed the Mega Man Battle Network anime. Uh, it might have been a cartoon. I'm not sure if it was a Western studio. Um, that was really good. I really enjoyed that cartoon. A little bit different from the normal Mega Man. What I remember in Battle Network is that it's like set in the real world. And this kid has like a thing where he plugs in. I feel like it's like a USB thing. It was very 90s. We plugged it in and Mega Man went into the battle network and then he, he battled creatures in like a digital universe. Um, this looks really good. It's obviously different from usual Mega Man games. It's not like a platform game. Um, I think they're like on these grid based turn based battles. Um, but interesting to see it in the collection. I'm quite pleased them to see them do other Mega Man games that wasn't regular Mega Man or Mega Man X. Um, I think a lot of people are still waiting for a collection of the 3D Mega Man games, Mega Man Legacy. Uh, I always keep hoping they'll do a Mega Man Maker, like they did for Mario Maker. I think they had one in development at some point, but must I think it got canned, unfortunately. 
Um, also, just let me know if you need me to change the audio at any point. Need more background music. Well, this pedal music. Or if it's too high. This is, like I said, this is our pilot episode. So we're just working out some of the... Working some of the kinks. Uh, next. Oh, let's drop a pedal ball, actually. We'll move on. Drop a pedal ball. Here we go. Now over to our pedal screen. Uh, I always like to go for a green one first. Now, to help... If I do like an audio version of this, I'm going to try and like describe what happened to the Peggle Ball. Also helps people that are just listening because this is a, a talk show slash podcast. Obviously, you might not be watching, so it might be easier just to chat it through. Let's do this. Okay, so we've hit a green. We've got multi-ball here. Um, one fell down the middle and didn't hit anything. And we've got another one going on the right-hand side. Let's hit another multi-ball. Doing a bit of a slide. Oh, one ball fell, didn't get a bucket. But we did get one bucket shot there. Okay, let's go back over to our news. Whoop. There you go. And that works well. Okay, that's one potential team from going. This I'm very excited about. Pac-Man World Repack. This is a remaster of Pac-Man World, which is when Pac-Man went into 3D, like a proper 3D platforming game. Now, I saw some of these were like... I think there's a Pac-Man World 3 or something on the Wii U... And I've always kind of seen them like, this is interesting. A 3D platformer, but with Pac-Man. But I was like, I've never bought one or never got around to it, but it seemed popular enough and it has that anime as well. Well, I think it's a CGI cartoon. I think it's on Netflix, Pac-Man World. It is in the UK anyway. And I was like, oh, it should be interesting. I didn't realize Pac-Man World went back so far because this is a remaster of Pac-Man World that was on the original PlayStation, what I've been told. Um, this looks really good. I'm really got high hopes for this. Um, I'm up for any. I know people get bored of remasters occasionally, but 3D platformers. I'm not so fussed about them remastering because we do live on, in a time of weird era at the moment where we don't get as many 3D platformers. We are starting to see a bit more from indie developers, which I do appreciate. Um, there were quite a few 3D platformers actually in the Awesome Games Direct, which I've got a video on my YouTube channel of the highlights from that. Um, it's Pac-Man, and that Pac-Man Museum Plus that I streamed the other week was really good. I actually want to go back and play some more Pac and Roll, I think it was called. The one that was on the DS, or the 3DS, and Pac-Man was like a ball, and you're rolling around these environments. That's good. That's got a slight 3D platforming vibe to it. Um, let's see what else we've got here. Let's drop another ball, and we'll move over pedal screen here and then we'll move on to our next story now i'm going to slide it down the left here oh it did a nice slide got about four oranges there and we've missed the bucket okay so next up at the nintendo direct was blanc i'm not sure how it's been pronounced i think this is kind of like it's two characters now i might need to check on the animals but i think it's a fox on a wolf it's like a co-op adventure has a very beautiful black and white artistic style. Um, yeah, I think that's all I could say about that one. I think it just has a really good, good art style. I'm looking forward to that. I like a good cop adventure. Um, yeah, okay, that's a bit of a short news story. Let's do a few more Nintendo directs before we drop the ball again. Uh, next one, very excited for. Not finished the first one though is on my backlog to finish so hopefully i'll finish that first mario and rabbit sparks of hope this is their sort of xcom take nintendo and ubisoft's xcom take on like xcom take no their take on xcom um yeah so it's like a turn-based battle thing we all kind of like how xcom works high behind cover then you see how far you can shoot it's like oh you can shoot five crits away this one seems a little bit more free-flowing than the first one, which I thought was an interesting choice. It basically says how far of an area your character can run, but isn't quite like click and you run there. You can like run around more smoothly. So you've got a little bit more control. It's not just like run to this grid over here, this boundary. So yeah, I'll see how that goes. I think that's just more for visual look. I'm not quite sure how much that affects the gameplay. I think they just want people to feel like a little bit more in control of where like Mario's running and stuff. It does mean you can pull off some more tricks. It did show like one character like 
running and hitting three bad guys with a melee attack before hiding and then shooting. There you go. Next we've got Little Noah Beyond of Paradise. And I need to remind myself of that one. I think this is the 2D platform. At first, I thought it was going to be a free to play game, but I believe it's not. And that's one that's actually come out on the direct that's available now. Yeah, so this is like a very colorful 2D sort of platformer, but action game at the same point. I've, nothing's really shown me. Here we go. Uh, yeah, so you've got skill bars. It's got like a nice hippie cutesy look. I think you've got like pets and minions as well. So you can send that to battle. I don't know. Something about this one really grabbed me. I was like, yeah, that looks fun. I'm looking forward to more of that one. Um, I need to check that one out a bit more. I don't know much about that from what we've only seen in the trailer. Uh, let's read one more news story before we drop a ball. Next, I'm really looking forward to. Anyone who's a fan of Bacterio, Bac Bacterio? Factorio and Satisfactory will be looking forward to this one. Rail Grade. So Rail Grade is a railway construction game. I'm guessing it's going to work like Factorio where you go try and move resources from one place to another. Kind of like the similar thing with like building a but this is railway tracks, everything. And like this trailer literally just shows railway tracks going over railway tracks. Like there's so there's so much going on. I definitely recommend going and check out the trailer. There's a lot going on in rail grade. Um yeah, that's obviously for the switch, but I believe that is coming to PC as well. Uh, maybe some other platforms, but yeah. That one I'm looking forward to. It's funny, I got asked a question the other day, like are there many train games like yeah there's some train sims um there's a few like indie train puzzle games and um, playing on steam at the moment but um this seems to fit in the right thing and because it's coming to switch it might be a little bit accessible i have got another train game not railway tycoon but something similar but it's so complicated the stuff and like you try and build a track you run out of money and like the string goes nowhere and i was like eh, this looks like it might be a little bit more accessible well those easy to pick up Hard to master games, hopefully. Um, let's talk about the next game, and then we'll drop a ball here. Sonic Frontiers. Uh, this one didn't have a good showing at first. Everyone was a bit confused, but I think the footage that they shown originally on IGN, whoever was playing or showing off, maybe don't know what was going on, or it just didn't look particularly good. Um, this follow-up trailer, though, Looking pretty good. I'm going to share the same criticism that everyone else has given, where the environment looks a bit generic. Like, we've just gone for realistic hills. I want to see, like, the zones in Sonic, but there are bits where he goes off to smaller hub worlds that do have that more classic Sonic look to it. Uh, it's interesting. Sonic in open world is an interesting thing. Although they've technically already done that sort of in Sonic Lost World, I think the Zelda expansion was a bit more open world, but this is truly like really open world, like climbing towers, as obviously. But I think Sonic Speed and all the rails they can grind on makes a big difference. There's some bits in the clip here where it's like grinding along a rail one side of the canyon and jumps to the other side and carries on grinding. Um, there's some good speed. There was a weird boss fight in this one as well, in the trailer. It's like chipping away, and like it's like some spinning thing. I don't know. We need to see some more. Is there going to be enough things in this open world to explore and see? Or will it look a bit like, I'm hoping it's not just all this grass green hills. If they go for like Breath of the Wild, where... Oh, morning, Maggie Pop. Welcome to our new a news breakfast show. Um, I should really have breakfast this bit, but I've already eaten breakfast by now. And we're just chatting about Sonic Frontiers. I need to call it Sonic World then. It's an open world Sonic game. I was just saying, uh, hopefully it's like um, Breath of the Wild. Because Breath of the Wild, once you get around exploring, man, there's so many different environments in that game. Like volcanoes, the snowy hills. Like, I love Breath of the Wild. Uh, here's something. The only Zelda game I finished. We're very close to finishing Wind Waker. It is actually here. If I grab it now. Switch over to my camera so you can see. Here is Wind Waker. It's on a special shelf here of games I really want to finish next. They sell my desk so they can haunt me every day. I've not finished them. 
Um, so we're very close to finishing Wind Waker, and that will be the second Zelda game I've finished. I think I can do it. I think I can pull it off. I haven't finished Breath of the Wild. I can't see why I can't finish Wind Waker. Right, like I said, promised, we'll do another drop now, and then we'll move on to our next news story. So let's move to our drop screen. And I'm going to go, and just a reminder, you can choose where to drop the ball using the channel points. And we're experimenting with the channel points for drop the ball. Maybe I'll lower the price if it's too much. I haven't quite figured out what is an all right price in the channel points. Um, I'm going to go with right. Also, I'm doing a bit of audio description here for people who are just listening. I'm going to shoot the ball far right. I'm going to hit an orange. It's done a bit of bounce. We've got another orange. Sort of in the center, it's doing a bounce for a while. Oh, it's gone a bit left. Hit another orange. Another one. And in the bucket. I love it when it goes in the bucket. Right, here is an interesting game that's also been announced. There's a lot of Nintendo Direct stories here. It was a big week for Nintendo Switch news. Disney's Dreamlight Valley. Now, something you should know about this before I go into more detail. If you're a Game Pass subscriber, you will be getting this early access in September on Game Pass. It's a free to play game, so you're like, why is it coming to Game Pass? But it won't be coming out until 2023, everywhere else. But game Pass subscribers do get early access to it. So, in this case, I think I'll be playing it on the Xbox. Just for that reason, because I do happen to have Game Pass. Um, shame Nintendo didn't take the opportunity to try and fit that in a Nintendo Switch Online expansion membership, or whatever they're calling these days. I think that would have been a good opportunity. There's still a chance for them to do that, but um, basically it's just like, Animal Crossing, sort of? I hate to always bundle everything as Animal Crossing-like, but it's the easiest way to describe it being Animal Crossing. It's probably one of the most popular games on the Nintendo Switch at the moment. A um, bunch of different Disney characters. I thought I saw Wally, Buzz Lightyear. Um, I think everyone's to scale, so Buzz Lightyear is like the size of an action figure compared to like everyone else. Um, I'm guessing, from what I can tell, you do some farming, you decorate a house. This free-to-play which is both good and bad. How heavy is this going to be on microtransactions? Like, will you be able to just hang out, have a house, to do farming without hitting too many barriers? Um, interesting to see a Disney game with characters again, because I was a big fan of Disney Infinity, but unfortunately, in the great Toys to Life crash of the last decade, um, and that disappeared, unfortunately. That's a real shame. I was really big into Toys to Life, and I never stopped being into them. I thought it was a good idea. But it just, I don't know what happened. I don't know if there was too many and people went, Pfft. it always seems to happen. I don't know I don't know what it is about people where people just go, no, nah, I've had it with this. What happened with Rock Band on Guitar Hero? I really enjoyed Rock Band and Guitar Hero. And one day people just went, we're not buying them anymore. And people stopped playing them. It's weird. It's weird to think there were living rooms full of people just like rocking out, enjoying with friends. And then that's completely disappeared. So same happened with Toys for Life. Anyway, that was a random tangent, but it was just, Interested in a Disney game with Disney characters again. How bad will the microtransactions be? I, if Are you buying characters? Have you got to buy the furniture? If this is like, I want a new table, it's £2 or £3. I'm just going to be like, eh, I'm going to clock out. I'm curious to see. I, maybe the characters will be alright. Maybe if you could like earn the items in game. But if you wanted to play as Wally, you could... They're like, oh, you want to play as Wally? Here's five pounds. A bit like how skins work in Fortnite and other games. Um, it's called Disney Dreamlight Valley. It's coming to Switch in 2023, but will be on Game Pass this September for the Xbox. Xbox One and Series X and S. Um, it's a free-to-play game. Harvest Moon-esque. So we'll have to wait and see. I'll try and cover some more. It's free to play and it's on Game Pass, so I'll be getting it. So definitely in September, keep posted and I'll either do some streams or video about it. Because I'm actually curious to see how much how much you can play. Like a lot of free to play games, how much can you play the game before you hit a barrier? Some are really good, like Fortnite. You don't even need to drop a penny on that. And a lot of those other games, Fortnite, Warzone, Apex Legends, um, you don't really need to drop any money. I'd say Apex Legends a little bit more. You might want to buy some stuff because some of the cooler characters are a lot behind having to buy them, but... That's about it. Um, next up, we've got Dragon Quest Treasurers. This, this is, this was a shock. 
Now, I'm enjoying Dragon Quest, the newest one. I've been playing it on Game Pass. I haven't played in a while. I love JRPGs, but they're so big sometimes. They do get shelved a little bit. Um, I do want to return to it at some point. Dragon Quest Builders also looks good, but that was more like a Minecraft-esque type game. More with construction building buildings. This is strange though. This is Dragon Quest Universe. But you're running around, you can buddy up with like some of the creatures that you might have like defeat and like the slimes. And you're going and you're hunting down treasure. It's like a big treasure hunt. So I'm not quite sure how that's gonna play into it. Like, are you giving clues to where the treasure is? Is it like a map and you're just gonna find out where it is? Um yeah, it'll be interesting. I'll see how that goes and how the story plays into it because it's definitely something different. It's not like a big JRPG story like, oh, the the mother tree or Gaia is in trouble. The spirits of the earth. All the crystals are saying, I'm using such stereotype JRPG things here, but it's always something about the crystals. Final Fantasy is obsessed with crystals. It's just like, oh, the crystals of Gaia or spirit. Make it sound like I don't like it. I love Final Fantasy games. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm intrigued. I love the Dragon Quest art style, though. So, this if it should be an in between. Hopefully, it's not as time and consuming or like commitment consuming as like say a mainstream Dragon Quest. But hopefully, it's not just like a small pick up and play. Something in the middle would be nice. And last story for the Nintendo Direct before we move on to some other stories is Harvest Stella. I don't even. I hope I can pronounce that right. This, let me just hydrate here. This is something special. Like this, I saw this. I was like, yep, this is for me. Looks like a Final Fantasy game. It's by Square Enix. You obviously harvesting. So definitely got like harvest moon vibe or and plants some plants here I'm doing crops. Then go out and battle monsters with some combat and stuff. Looks very Final Fantasy, like a modern Final Fantasy. Looks really cool. I love this idea. Now I know before I get people in some comments on a video later or in chat per finger, there's already a game like that. It's called Rune Factory. I'm fully aware of Rune Factory. It does look good and I do keep meaning to play a Rune Factory game. But this is interesting with a Square Enix, like really like it's basically I feel like when I was watching like I feel like someone there wanted to go, I so want to call it. Final Fantasy Farming or something. Or Harvest Final Fantasy. And someone's like, nope, let's not make it a Final Fantasy game. It would have been cool if it was Final Fantasy because I'd love to see some Moogles and Chocobos. Uh, hopefully they'll make a cameo appearance. But yes, this one looks really good. Um, I just love this idea. The battling the monsters and then doing some farming. They have a nice mixture between the Final Fantasy and a Harvest Moon game or stories I should say story seasons very confusing uh, harvest moon is the bad one story seasons is the good one these days um, I'm really enjoying story seasons on the switch I need to play some more um, there's a little bit of battling there you battle like these moles in the cave but it doesn't really quite have as much battling as like there is in harvest stellar I feel like they've gone for a full proper combat it's not just like a little extra thing in there uh, okay, before we move on to the next story, we do have a ball drop. Meggy Pop has redeemed Peggle Drop Right. Don't worry, I didn't forget about it there. Let's move over. Peggle Drop Right. Okay, so I'm going to go for this orange one here, but then we're going for a right drop. Here we go. Okay, we've hit one orange on the right. Oh. Ah. We just got the orange, but we nearly got the bucket, but it didn't quite go in. Okay, let's move over back to the news. Okay, uh, as always with the news, it was very close to the bucket. We, I think we have one bucket today. Uh, next news story. Okay, so some of these news stories are a little bit heavier. So all my resource from my source for the Nintendo Direct was from watching the Nintendo Direct. Um, I like to make sure I credit where I've seen these news stories. Next story, news story is from Kotaku. Um, make sure you go and check out kotaku.com. They have some great news stories on there. Some of these news stories might have some heavy content in it. I'm just warning. I'm not going to shy away from um, more difficult gaming news stories. So this one, 
I'm a little bit surprised and not surprised at the same time. It's a little bit sad to hear it from an Xbox studio because I thought Xbox was the one company that might not fall into this horrible trap that's been going on. But it turns out Bethesda, now they claim, an Xbox executive does claim, this isn't happening anymore, Bethesda. How much you can believe that, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Unfortunately, Bethesda is now in this horrible trend as all these other gaming studios over the last couple of years have fallen into. Crunch. It turns out while they're making Fallout 76, which is a game that was completely broken when it came out, um, I enjoyed a little bit since then. And this is one of these cases where I'm like, don't rush things. Why is it with people rushing things? I know there's some angry fans out there like, I want my video game. Just ignore that small minority crowd. People should just have longer to work on saying, you know, when you've got something done, do it. Don't rush it. Because Bethesda here has been the accusations of crunching staff members. Now, I hate crunching staff members. There's no reason. If you haven't got time to finish the game by a deadline, like stop setting strict deadlines and be like, you know what? Someone should just go, hey, Todd, this game isn't ready for summer or ready for August or whatever. Give us some more time and stuff like, hey, everyone, you're going to work seven days a week and not see your family and you're probably going to sleep in the office or something like that sucks. No one should be doing that. Um, a few studios have talked out about like, hey, um, I love the Cuphead studio. The studio that make Cuphead, probably my favorite studio at the moment. Person that they spoke, they said, I don't take if it takes years for our content to come out. We're not overworking our staff members to do like, here's a normal five day week. When the content's ready, it'll be ready, you know? And people have to wait for that. And some people weren't going, ah, I wanted the Cuphead DLC. Well, you know what? <laughs> to those people, they can, <laughs> they can wait. Because you know what? People that really do appreciate the game and fans, it doesn't matter when the DLC comes out or game comes out. Because they're going to enjoy it and love it. Do you know I mean? If the DLC for Cuphead didn't come out for another two years, I wouldn't mind. Because when it comes out, you're going to be like, oh yeah, really going to enjoy this. Do you mean? The same for lots of games. So it's a shame to hear, especially with a game that came out so broken. I bet if they like, took another year or two, um, it could have been better. This same thing goes for Cyberpunk 2077. I think they could have waited longer as well. This just, There's no excuse. This goes for any industry, but it's happening a lot in the game industry. I don't understand this thing like, we've got to rush out. I know people like to make the money but come on these are big studios here these games are going to make bucket loads of money when they come out anyway and these companies like look how much xbox bought bethesda xbox has clearly got money flowing out of its pockets it doesn't need to be rushing to bring anything out it doesn't need to be making crunch this silly competitive human nature we're like we've got to get it out now we've got to get it then and fans getting angry and they get the little pitch box and like i'm so angry i'm so angry i want my video game like if you're not someone, if either if you don't have a backlog of games, you either haven't bought that many games, or you have somehow purchased time from somewhere. I can tell you now, with the backlog of games I've got, I don't even have the time. Like even I know realistically, like if I stop buying games now, it would still take me years probably to get through this backlog. And I bet lots of other people are saying they've probably got a bunch of games. You know what? Have a look for your backlog, choose a game, and play it. And wait till they like, say like Starfield. I'm looking forward to Starfield. It's a new Bethesda IP. It's a space game. But you know what? I'm not in a rush for it. If it comes out next year, great. If they need to take another year, make sure it's more polished and so they're not crunching staff members, go for it. Take another year. Um, because you know what? There's a ton of other games coming out before then. A whole backlog of games already got here. Like I'm looking here, I've already got the Kingdom Hearts collection game to play. World of Final Fantasy. Uh, Starlink Battle for Atlas. Detective Pikachu. I mean, I've not even finished the first Detective Pikachu yet. So I'm no rush for the second one. Um, so there you go. That's that's my take on it. I know everyone's different feelings. And some people are like, ah, oh, I should have it now. Yeah, it's, uh, it's complicated. But I'm going to give my honest opinion here. And I think this one's a little bit hard to argue on because if you're going to argue and go, oh, they should definitely finish it here. Uh, if you're encouraging people to crunch and overwork staff members, uh, not a fan. No offense. Um, I don't. I don't stand there. I'm going to stick to my my morals. I think you should make sure your staff. Like to be honest, 
most workplaces should move to a four day week. If you kind of think about it, it's weird how we've got to 2022 and people still do five day weeks, if not longer. You think about your whole life, five days at work. It's a lot of time at your time to think you just spend more of your life at work than enjoying life. And that's kind of sad. I think we really need to make some progress in like moving to four day weeks. Also, four day weeks would open more hours of work time for other pain. You could technically hire more employees. And let's be honest, a lot of companies make so much money, they wouldn't even need to cut the salaries. Like you could pay the same person for five days for four days. Jeff Bezos doesn't need more money in his back pocket. He could afford to employ Bob and go, Bob, stop doing five days. Do four days for the same price. And I think that's more of a positive thing. People should have a slightly higher salary and companies that are making buckloads. I get there's smaller companies and whatever, but you mean lots of companies that are making money, they just don't like to. That's, anyway, that's a whole complicated thing. Let's move on to... Oh, let's do a peggle drop and we'll move on to our next story. We've got some more positive stories in here as well. Um, but I'm not going to shy away from the non-positives. People need to know about it. I think a lot of people sometimes they just play the games and forget. I love Rin Kotaku, so this is how I know about it. So um, let's move to the pebble screen. I'm going to drop it. Let's go for a left one here. I'm dropping it on far left. Okay. Oh, got a long shot there. A double long shot. Oh, another orange one. Oh. Ah, we missed the bucket. Two long shots there. Okay, next story. Ooh. Ooh, we're going for a middle drop next. I will do that next, Mighty Pop. Thanks for that. Uh, next story. Oh, here's one for Halo fans. This is interesting because this is for... This is from Kotaku again. For the Master Chief Collections, not Halo Infinite, which is the new one. Master Chief Collection, if you don't know, is a collection of uh, Halo games. One, two, three. And added OD, OD, T, O there. OS. Oh my goodness. The spin off one. Halo ODST. That's the one. Halo. Did they add Halo Reach now? Halo 4. It's only 5 that's not in the collection, isn't it? Um, yes, yeah, so they have those in single player campaigns, multiplayer. It's had some. Issues, although I've never had any issues with it, but it has had issues in the past with its matchmaking. Uh, so that is eight years old now. I didn't know that collection was eight years old. Um, I think I recently re downloaded it. I do like playing occasionally, but I've not quite got back into Halo multiplayer. What's interesting about this? Halo devs, and I was like, oh no, this is painful. They're exploring adding microtransactions, which I think is strange. Like, this microtransactions Halo Infinite. It's interesting how there is a player base for like some that play the multiplayer in the new Halo and some play the old one. But I can see why. Because I love Halo 3 multiplayer. I don't know what it is. I have no idea. I'm not sure what it is about number three and the multiplayer number three that I love so much. I do like old school shooter multiplayer games though. I think there's something about them that we've kind of lost in time. A bit like our like Unreal Tournament. And things there was just something about it maybe there's like a purity to it or just like hey people are playing they're not worrying about leveling leveling up um unlocks and all this jazz so but i think microtransactions to an eight-year-old game is kind of i don't know do they need more money this is another case where but like xbox has got enough money does it need to be squeezing anymore at the master chief collection especially all the issues that if master chief collection had had so many issues over the years Maybe I'd be a little bit more indifferent about the microtransactions. But an eight-year-old game with a new Halo game already out on the market. This is an odd one. I hope the word exploring. And the Halo team have been a bit in hot water lately over some controversial skins and skin names. So let's hope they don't get themselves into any more hot water here with that. Okay, let's move on to the next drop. And then we have a birthday to celebrate. We're going for a middle drop. Ooh, Maggie Pop said middle. No. Purple, the orange. Should we try and get an orange? Let's see if it dances upwards. Oh! <gasps> ah! That got two oranges, but missed the bucket. Move over to the news. 
Okay, next story. Well, this is an easy one. There's actually more to the story, actually. Because it was had one story. And I'm multiplied into more. Atari. Yes, Atari. Whoa. They seem to be here one minute, gone the next, and back again. Atari is turning 50. Or has just turned 50 this year. 50 years of Atari. I can't... This is when my mind boggles when people are like, Oh, those kids and the video games and stuff. Or, or people that go like, Oh, video games are for young people. I'm like, what are you on about? I don't understand these people that say like, You meet someone like, in their mid 30s and 40s, and they do the whole grumple thing. Like, ah, the youths in video games, or like, they don't get video games, or don't seem to treat video games like an art form or media. I'm like, it's been around ages. Look, like, Atari's 50. 50? Come on. 50 years is a long time. You'd think by now people would have got over that. Um, I'm laughing about that as well because it's not like a dig at anyone in particular. Um, it's interesting because you do find this like ground of people that really just don't think video games is a media. Like, it's like, oh, everyone's like, oh, music, film. So games is this weird one. Either like you're into games or people are really fuddy duddy about it and they'll be like, ah, for the young people. I find that hilarious. Because both my parents play video games. Maybe not as much as me. But they do. I mean, my dad plays like... And he's not like, oh, it's because they're playing Candy Crush or something. I hate that. Like, stereotyping more older people into Candy Crush or something. No. My dad's playing The Division 2. And things like that. Like, that's not like some... I'm going to casually pick it up. And they've been playing games for a long time. Yeah, my parents originally had, like, original Pong in there. And, um, yeah, they are much older than me. So, they were around, they were around before Atari was around. So, if people that are older than some of the biggest game studios can be into games, then it's anyone. And you just look online, look at, um, I think her name's Shirley. The, is it Shirley? Oh, I'm mixing names up. One is, um, there's an older woman who plays Skyrim a lot, and there's the World of Warcraft grandma on, um, Twitch. She's amazing, so definitely go and check her out as well. Um, yeah, these people are well older, like in the 80s, and then they're rocking around playing MMOs and RPGs, so games are for anyone of any age. Um, it's all about inclusion, everyone, everyone can play games, it doesn't matter of age, gender, race, um, whatever other categories you want to add, <laughs> everyone can play games. Um, how do we get this story? Atari is turning 50. <laughs> Been around a long time. Now, Atari's made some great games. Now, what I'm looking forward to, my voice is really going. This is the one thing I'll have to get used to this new show. Of talking a bit more. I don't usually talk this much. Most of the days I've spent editing videos. Do you mean? I, just, I don't talk to anyone else. That's like a, a solo thing. Like, I'm here editing, vid editing videos. So. Yes, there is a bundle collection. I think they said the collection is going to have 100 games in. It's not the newer stuff, though. Don't be going to that. I think they're going to go like 70s, 80s, and maybe some early 90s stuff from what I could tell. Um, don't know. I think there's a few remixes in there. We could bring up a list, actually. Let's have a quick look. And I'll just... All right. Of what we can be in. Okay, we're on pocket lint here. Let's see what resources we can bring up here. Yeah, they've not said. That's a very helpful article. You really just love articles that they, they're going to talk about what the what's in here. Okay. So they're doing some new games in it. Sword Quest Airworld. People are waiting 40 years for, for a sequel. Uh, so there's some new games in there. Some remakes that are like Yars Revenge Reimagined. Neo Breakout. But yeah, there's going to be a bunch of other games in there. They don't list the games here yet. Yeah. Um, it's coming to Atari, VCS, Switch, Xbox One, PlayStation 4. PlayStation 5, Steam, and Epic Games. 
got RT, Atari VS is still a thing. That's like an Atari console and you can download games. Eh, people have mixed feelings on that. I don't have that yet. So anyway, Atari 1050. Congratulations, Atari. And yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to um, checking that out. Let's move on to the next story. Let's drop a Peggle Ball. And we'll move on to the next new story. We can go for far left here. Oh, bucket. Yes, in the bucket. Okay, next story. We've got a double bill of stories here. Both from, um, I got them from Kotaku. So there's a Battle Royale game called Spellbreak, which I did try out. I think it was on Game Pass. I think it's free to play now. Usual Battle Royale rules, except for like used magic spells. And you could combine them for like different effects. Like here's a gas attack. And you use fire and you get like an explosion. I thought it had potential. I just, I'm not quite sure why I didn't play some more of it. I think I just got caught up with other games. That's one of those games I unfortunately I forgot about and put to one side, like the Darwin Project, which I missed the Darwin Project because that was a Battle Royale game I did quite enjoy. Came that close down. I really, my thing is, I know people are going to hate me for saying this, but just add some bots. If it's a quieter time in the day, and you want to fill up slots so people aren't waiting too long, add bots. Multiplayer games that do that, I really appreciate because you know what? Sometimes we can't play games at the time we want to play them. And we might want to play them and play them, and it's a quieter time of the day. Nothing worse than sitting 10 minutes at a lobby screen and no one's joining in. You just add bots. I would like the games that do, hey, we add bots, but if someone joins the match, they just replace the bot. They do this in Gears of War. Fabulous system. And it just makes sure there's always some online matches going. And AI and bots are pretty smart these days anyway. So people really hate on them. But I feel like these are people that just play popular games. Who aren't sitting around in lobbies. I really want these smaller games. Or games that aren't as popular. To still be alive. And I think if it was a match always available. But if you're like a new player. I'm like oh I want to check out. Uh, I'm going to make up a game now. Spongebob Royale. But not many people are playing Spongebob Royale. It'd be good if it's like a new player came in and was like, oh, I'd jump straight into a match because they filled it with some bots and some online players. Otherwise, if you were someone new and you're joining the game and you're sitting there for 10 minutes, I can tell you now, there's going to be a high percentage of people that sit there for 10 minutes going, no, I've not found a match. I'd uninstall the game and never bother to try and look for a match again. And that's a real shame because it that kind of sucks. So I feel like some bots, especially in the beginning, I bet like if some games just had bots to start with and once more enough people were playing online, I wouldn't even need the bots that often. It's just nice to jump straight into a match or not wait long, long, like wait a minute or two. Because we haven't got, we don't all have the um, luxury of having 10 minutes to wait for a multiplayer match, do we? So, unfortunately, the Battle Royale spell break is shutting down in 2023. So we've got a bit more time. I will try and keep an eye on the time of the day it closes so I can do a farewell live stream like we did for Defiance 2050 which we were originally going to do for Terra, until it turns out the console version of Terra lives on. Now, that was sad. And then it was followed with even more sad news that the developer studio, the studio behind Spellbreak, has been bought and is absorbed by Blizzard. Activision Blizzard. Uh, no. I know some people are going, why is that bad? They're a big company. Until Xbox finally buys them and probably sorts out the issues, the amount of issues at Activision Blizzard, I would not want to wish anyone to have to work there if they didn't need to. In fact, they underpay the staff members. Some staff members can't even afford to pay for the lunch at the cafeteria. Bobby Kotek is evil. Takes too much money. He's, he makes so much money, he could have easily paid everyone's salary and more and he wouldn't even know that money had gone left his bank. He's that rich. Plus, he's evil. He did friend to kill one of his assistants. Um, there's been multiple accusations um, of sexual assault. More severe things. I told you to be some serious topics, so I'm sorry about this. Uh, I just want to make a point why Activision Blizzard bad and something needs to be done about it. Uh, one woman was harassed so much she killed herself. Um, 
Oh, the list goes on. They're just the very toxic environment at Activision Blizzard. And things need to be fixed. So I'm just bringing it up because I feel like people should be aware. I don't, I don't like to sugarcoat things. I'm not going to go, oh, Activision Blizzard, they make the video games. No. There's issues going on there. I have high hopes if Xbox buys them, something will be sorted out. Need to get rid of Bobby Kotick. They should probably scrap the whole board of directors and get fresh people, a more diverse cast. Um, there's probably a mile long more issues. I'd go read an article on Kotaku or Polygon and they'll probably tell you a whole list of stuff there. It's not good. Things need to be sorted out there. It just needs a refresh of management and a change of culture. It has what, I think they online call it like a frat house culture. That's not good for a workplace. Um, so yeah, it's probably another place that suffers crunch as well, to be honest. Add that to the list. So I was a little bit sad to see they've been absorbed. And I'm a little bit disappointed by other studios like Toys of Bob got absorbed. And now working on Call of Duty or something when they could. They made so many, like, those Crash Bandicoot games are good. Skylander games are good. What else did they make? Um, did they do... Or whichever group would make it working on Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2, they are absorbed to make call, carry on on Call of Duty. Everything gets absorbed into making Call of Duty. And I'm just like, oh man, there were so many other great titles that we could have had. So, yeah, that's a shame about that. So, I'm gonna, I'll am gonna i check out some more Spellbreak at some point. Um, I'm hoping maybe they added, did add some bots to try and keep it alive. Um, it's been out a couple of years, but not particularly long. It's this Battle Royale genre, like, if you're releasing a new Battle Royale, oh, it's dangerous. Like, I hope that, that Super Animal Royale one does all right, but I'm worried about that as well because I have not heard many people talk about it. Um, I think unless you're Fortnite, Apex Legends, Call of Duty Warzone, I can't... Even that like Ubisoft is closing down, actually. Um, oh, God, how bad is it? I forgot what it's called. Hyper something. That one for me, the only reason I dropped off that, the controls were too sensitive, even when you change the sensitivity, so I I dropped off, but yeah. Also Ubisoft bad. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Let's drop one more ball, and we have one more story, I think, before we round up. Um, unless anyone else has any other news topics they want to discuss. Um, in future, if we if this picks up and we get iron out the few kinks in this news breakfast news show, um, I will be doing a section on my Patreon and Twitch subscribers um, composed questions for me to answer at the end, or like like an, a bit like how they do in other podcasts, like emails. But I'm going to do it for the Patreon Patreon questions. I might have a section for that. Uh, you can just ask about gaming news or my gaming questions there, and I can give a better answer. Like I'm happy for people to discuss things in chat, but I want to save like questions. For like a bonus for patrons out there and it'd be a good time to discuss things in a little bit more in depth right let's do another peggle drop we might if we don't have enough peggle drops i'm gonna i'm gonna finish this map although to be honest we we'll probably get it done in this drop hopefully i can reach the orange okay here we go <gasps> oh yeah Mm, do. Yes, the Xbox leaderboards aren't working at the moment for some reason. Okay, go back here. Oh, we're just getting some nice birds now. And a last story that I wrote down. There was a million stories this week, and I didn't know how many stories and how long it would last me. So, this I'm excited for. But. You might think it's strange why I'm excited for this. Sega is considering a live-action Persona movie or TV show. Now, I'll be honest, I've not played Persona. I think I tried the first one on the PlayStation Classic. That's the mini PlayStation. But Persona 3, 4, and 5 are coming to the Switch. That was in the Switch announcement as well. And they're also coming to Game Pass. And I have a Game Pass subscription. I'll be checking those out. I'm going to probably jump straight to number 5, to be honest. Why I'm looking forward to this? A. Persona always looks like it'd be cool. It's got some other cool anime style characters, so... It'd be cool to see it live action. Um, A. Once they listen to the fans with the Sonic movie, 
that Sonic movie was good fun and Sonic looked really good. And I'm really looking forward to number two. As soon as it comes onto a streaming service that I have, I'll be watching the Sonic second movie. Because they got it right. And Sega listened and I was like, you know what? If Sonic, if Sega can pull it off with the Sonic movie, I have high hopes. And also get more people to know about Persona. Because I feel like Persona is more obscure Japanese RPG, which is only a little bit more popular now in the West since the last few releases. Looks really cool. I don't know much about Persona. What I have seen looks really cool. And I'm always down for seeing some anime turn into some live action thing. I know some people grumble, but you know what? Give it a shot. See how it is. I'm never going to shoot anyone down for like a movie or TV series idea. You know what? Try it. If you fail at it, then it's disappointing. But sometimes magic happens and you pull it off. And it turns out really well, like the Sonic movie. I'm glad Sega listens to fans because I'm a little bit worried about Illumination not listening to fans because after that cast announcement for the new Illumination Mario movie, I'm a little bit concerned about Chris Pratt and Mario and he's like, oh, I've done a voice that's not like the games. I'm like, uh. and I'll be honest, I've discussed this with some friends as well. Charles Martinet, the voice of Mario, should have just done the voice of Mario. I think it's a little bit of an insult to him. So I'm a little bit disappointed. I'm a bit surprised by Nintendo. I thought if they're going to make a Mario movie, they're not going to make any mistakes after last time. But time has kind of been kind to that other Mario movie because I watched that on, I think it was on Amazon Prime. I watched the original live action Mario movie with Bob, Hos- Bob Hoskins in from the early 90s. You know what? That movie's good fun. That is a fun movie. It's ridiculously silly and nowhere like accurate to any of the games. But you know what? That turned out really well. It's a shame people really hated it at the time. Because with, like... It, it To me, it feels like it should be, like, a cult classic. Now, it's one of those things you watch now and you're going, you know what? What people moan about? It? Some really good... There's some, like, good stunts, some good effects in that film. Like, practical effects. It's got, like, a weird quote, like... Cyberpunk dystopian? And I think it's really weird and bizarre in that film. I can't describe it. Check it out. If you haven't watched the live-action Mario movie film, the 90s definitely watch it i kind of wish i had a trailer to pull up here but i'd probably get it flagged for the music or something so um definitely worth checking out so there you go i think that's all the week news that's we've had about an hour of news here um i think that's gonna do it um uh, maybe we'll add some more news like i said it's a pilot episode so we'll add out some team things and i'll discuss with my um patreon and twitch subscribers any like feedback um, I just want to try it out. I wanted like a podcast style show because I've been wanting to do a podcast for a while, but I'm not really someone that feels confident enough to do like a pod- solo podcast. I really, because I'm really into podcasts that have more than one person. So um, I know other members of the team are very busy. So finding a time to actually sit down and record a podcast is a bit, a bit of a tricky thing. I think we'll go to our outro screen now and I'll just round up some things. But thank you everyone for joining us been giving us a try on this new pilot episode of I think a little bit different for us of some sharing some news because I love reading about the gaming news and I wanted a way to share it um, we're still going to carry on with our normal live streams on Tuesday Wednesdays and Thursdays so definitely check us out then uh, Tuesday is always something different Wednesday's Pokemon Unite Thursday is Robot Thursday so we'll go for a bit of some a retro action there like I've said previous live streams if you have any requests for like Particular games you would love to see, I'd be happy enough to cover it if I own it or can get my hands on it. And um, we've done that in the past, worked out really well. Even yesterday's experience was amazing. We got to play some multiplayer in Stuntman Ignition, which I thought, um, and like some of your viewers were saying, thought we'd never do again. So I'm happy enough to do that. I would really love to bring back some multiplayer games and some older games that still have the option to do that. So if anyone has any requests, let me know. Um, we do play lots of different consoles and we're constantly adding more. I have a list of um, funds that we're saving up to get like cables so we can stream GameCube games because I have a big library of GameCube games I would love to play and other things like that. I've got a list of adapters so I can play even older consoles. Um, so we're working towards that. One step at a time, we're working towards building that. But we do have a nice, friendly community here, which I really appreciate people tuning in um so that's gonna do it let's head over to the outro screen before we raid so thanks for watching again 
you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok, and YouTube. We have a new video on YouTube every week. Um, all the links in the description below. Thank you to our patrons and Twitch subscribers. And thank you to everyone else who's donated. You can help support us on Patreon. Twitch subscription, bits, stickers, sound alerts, and donations on Kofi. And we appreciate all the donations everyone gives. Because that's what helps us keep doing what we're doing. And that's it. Remember to stay safe. And let's see if we can raid today. Boom, boom, boom. Get the raid on. Okay, who we got on this morning? Um, yeah, let's raid Mini Mari. They're about to start. So they have got a bit of a... Oh no, they've already started. And they're doing some Elder Scrolls Online, which I will definitely be doing some of. Oh, no worries. That's I'm glad. That's why I was hoping, because the gaming news can be overwhelming, unless you like me who just loves reading news article stories there is a lot just me that was like a small fraction i just chose some highlights of the week um but yeah thank you for that and yeah let's raid mini Ma have i pronounced it right mini mario they're doing some elder scrolls online i will definitely be doing some more elder scrolls online and if you're on the europe um xbox Elder Scrolls Online, and you're looking for a nice, friendly guild with just a few activities, but there's no pressure, and a nice and friendly and accepting of everyone, check out Kate Sif. I'll put that in the chat. So if you go to the guild search and search there, we're always looking to recruit some more players there. It is a lovely, lovely group, um, but I know we're looking for some more players so we can do some more activities, but they have a nice, friendly group and a friendly Discord, so just send them a message on the Xbox European server they're on. And we'll raid Mini Mari now. And they are playing. I need to check pronouns here. And say I'll go with they. I'll say they because I, I don't like to make any mistakes. Um they're playing some Elder Scrolls online. And I think there's some drops happening as well. So if you're an Elder Scrolls player and you want to get yourself some lovely crates full of items. Now's your chance as well. Uh, make sure you say a hi from all of us as we start Panda Raid. Okay, here we go. Thanks for watching. Remember to stay safe and have a good weekend, everyone. Bye.